Hi and welcome! I'm Mrs. Cutefelds and today I have a wonderful cup of coffee with me. I suggest you grab yourself a cozy drink and join me in the comments because we are going to sit under the Christmas tree and talk about all things felting. If this is your first felt chat, these are series where I share with you my makes, my felting plans and woolly acquisitions, as well as chat about all things I notice in the felting world. Where should I begin? I guess I can show you everything I felted since the last felt chat episode. Well, technically it's not everything I felted because some of the things are Christmas gifts I still have to finish or they are somewhere around the world in the hands of delivery services. But I can definitely show you what I shared on my felting tutorials here on YouTube. I'm still trying to find the best workflow and shadow to be able to share videos here on YouTube together with my full-time job and I'm still struggling a bit. So during November I took a vacation for felting. It was full week just for felting and filming videos and I absolutely loved it. It was a wonderful feeling to wake up in the morning and know that all you have to do is felt all day. I finally was able to finish the video for those two. I promise this is the last time Hyacinth and Richard is joining me in the felt chat. They have been quite a frequent guests. But the wet felting tutorial for gnomes is out now. I'm sharing with you how to wet felt using both carded wool or wool bat and wool tops. By the way, you will find everything I mentioned today linked in description box. You can find it under the title of this video. There should be a tiny paragraph. You can click on it or click on see more button and it will expand and show you all the links I have added. Then I also shared needle felting tutorial for realistic looking candles. This was really fun project and so well received in felting groups and on social media. This is quick and easy project but looks really effective. If you are a beginner, you can practice wrapping the wool and achieving smooth finish. But in all, I am really excited about this project and all the possible uses for the candles. For now, I'm enjoying them as a decor for my home on the wooden base, but you can also use them as Christmas tree ornament. And one of my dreams is to felt a bunch of these and create my own ceiling full of floating candles like in Harry Potter. And then candles are also fitting for birthdays and Halloween. So as you can probably tell, I'm really excited about this project and you might see more candles in my future videos. An absolute Christmas miracle is how well received my winter scenery is. If you have seen my previous felt chats, you might know that I love 2D needle felting a lot, but it took me more than a year to finally try to needle felt landscape. And I decided to film a tutorial for it. I wasn't sure if it would work out and if I would publish the tutorial because I don't have any formal training or education in arts and I don't know if it's a myth but I think that landscapes and human figure are two really complicated things without the basis <laughs> that education often offers. So I figured that I can give it a try if I find simple composition and add some kind of fantasy element to it so it can help me to move away from the realism because realism really sometimes puts a lot of pressure on me and I get really scared that it's never going to look as I want and it's not good enough. So I went for a simple composition that anyone would recognize and added fun colors to my trees. It's really simple and I believe it's a good option for beginners or for seasoned felters who just haven't tried 2D needle felting before. I shared it on multiple Facebook groups and on my Instagram page and I still can't believe the reaction. Everyone was so, so positive and I received so many sweet comments and I'm so, so thankful to everyone. And I know that a lot of people discovered my channel from this tutorial. So if you are one of them, please say hi in the comments. I would really love to get to know you. 
And that's not all. During the Christmas time, I received a notification that someone has tagged me in their stories. It was fiber artist Laura who decided to try out my tutorial and has felted her own winter scenery. I will pop some photos on the screen now, but you should definitely check out her Instagram profile on other socials. You can find her as Fleece and Fiber Crafts. And she makes the most wonderful personalized pet portraits and other 2D felts. I absolutely adore her work. And she really made my day by trying out something I have shared online. And I hope to see many more winter scenes popping up on the internet. I'm also inspired to create a new winter scenery, including sunset or sunrise, but we will see how that goes. For now, my original winter landscape is no longer with me. It's on its way to Canada. I'm super honored to tell you that the new owner will be Needlefelter. You can find her online as Pin and Ivy, and she creates the most wonderful critters I have ever seen. Definitely check her out, and I'm so so humbled when needle felters decide to give home to my makes. Another thing that brings me joy is gift giving, and this is the time when I can finally share with you Archie, the Highland cow I have needle felted, following the course by felts by Philippa. Here it is. I know the colors are really fun. This is blend from World of Wool. It's called Under the Sea and has a bit of a blue glitter in it. I received it from the wool swap I had in the Felts by Philippa Patreon. And when my husband saw it for the first time, he was like, I need that Highland cow with a fringe like this. He made all the color choices for this Highland cow and completely forgot about this project. So. On his name day, it was a nice surprise from me. The class itself was really easy to follow. Philippa has broken everything down in separate lessons and it was really easy to work on my own pace. I spent around 10 hours on this project in total and I will definitely try to create a new Highland cow someday in more classic color scheme. For me, these crazy colors helped a bit because I sometimes get anxious when I'm following a specific class or tutorial that my results might differ from the original creators and that my work would not be so good. And little changes like these really eases me in the process and takes off this pressure of me. And the last finished project I can share with you is a new pet cave design. If you have seen my work before, you know that I love to create pet caves for cats and dogs and other animals and sell them on Etsy. And now I will also offer caves with this beautiful gradient. Mango is really loving modeling for me and he really enjoyed the photo shoot and video shoot for this new cave. And I will be offering color charts and customers will be able to choose the colors for the gradient themselves. This was a gift felt for a very special felting friend of mine. I sent it to felts by Philippa and Gracie and Safi, who actually have their own channel here on YouTube. I will link it in the description and I hope they will have loads of fun and time to rest in their new cave. Moving on to the works in progress. On the Christmas day, I finally picked up an old kit my husband gifted to me a while ago. It's one of those inexpensive kits from Amazon. And this has everything that symbolizes us in my eyes. We have the thing for bunnies and bears. And I know that this technically is a dog, but it looks like a bear to me, okay? And my husband really wants a dog, so that's also fitting. And we always have a specific Christmas ornament for each year. And this year my husband wanted me to felt it, but unfortunately it wasn't compatible with my shadow. So on the Christmas day, I finally picked up this kit because it's so matching. But unfortunately it was not finished for the Christmas because I'm super slow felter and I only have the head now. I hope to finish it 
until the new year's i will really try my best so wish me luck on this one and i actually really enjoy felting with this kit because my first ever felt was a kit from the same company. This time I'm not using the felting needles or felting mat that this kit includes. So my experience is way better in some areas and maybe that's why it's so enjoyable. But there is this lovely nostalgia when using the specific merino wool that these kits include and the specific style of the little make. So yeah, that's my work in progress number one. <laughs> Little head for now. My husband is making dinner for us in the background, so if you can hear him, I apologize. <laughs> but anyways, another project that is almost finished is a lamp. I wet felted a lamp and it will be a tutorial here on YouTube. I cannot show you the finished project yet because I'm still waiting for my husband to help me with the wooden base and lights to put inside. It doesn't look like much without these things, so for now you will just have to wait. In this project I'm playing around with lots of embellishment fibers I took home from my trip to UK. Silk, naps, viscose and locks. I plan to put out the video in the next month or so, so keep your eye out for it if you would like to try it or just see the result. Another thing that is not technically a work in progress yet, but I really hope to squeeze it in in my plans somewhere, I have joined the Felted Fungi Club or Felted Fungi Club. I know that people pronounce these things differently. Anyways, these are 2D needle felting workshops for felted fungi and they are held on closed Facebook group by a wonderful felter named Sophie. And I really hope to join in because it looks like everybody is having great fun and learning a ton of stuff. I have never tried to learn 2D needle felting from someone else before, so I hope to learn a thing or two there. Keep your eye out if you would like to join, because I know that Sophie opens up these courses for new students from time to time, and she's also offering some other projects here and there. So I will link her website and socials in the description of this video. On the same note of classes and workshops, I would like to mention the new material Serafina Fiber Art came out with. It's the amazing and really detailed course seems like of the female figure as i said before i think that human figure is really complicated and i wanted to mention this valuable resource because i know that many of you are interested in felting humans females and dolls so definitely check it out if you haven't seen it before but i'm sure you have let me grab my acquisitions and we can wrap this episode up with some woolly goodies. First is the only thing I purchased for myself during this time. I already mentioned to you in my last felt chat that I ordered some locks from Barn to Yarn, which is absolute lock heaven. These are Masham locks in colorway emerald glass, but I plan to use these locks to repurpose the carrots I shared with you in my tutorial a while ago. I will link this tutorial in the description box if you want to check it out in case you are in the spring mood already. But I plan to add these carrots to other freshly felted produce and gift them to my niece for her little play shop. I also got some blue faced Lester locks in a colorway Rocky View. I plan to use them to create some texture in the background of my 2D needle felting pieces. And then I had some felting related items under my Christmas tree. This is something I was really looking forward. It's a tea candle holder for essential oils and this is wonderful for felting wax melting. I have been using felting wax from Mom's Makery for a while, but I was struggling just <laughs> melting it in a spoon over a candle and 
it's really hard, it's really messy and it's not enjoyable. So I was over the moon when my husband gifted me this one because I think it's great, it's really practical because I can easily clean this out. I know that many of you are using the electric devices that are actually meant for keeping your tea or coffee warm on your table. I don't like those heating pads because I don't want electric stuff when I'm felting. It's enough that I'm always using my phone or tablet already. So this is pretty and it's elegant and it will really match my felting room decor. And then my bestie made a secret alliance with my husband and surprised me with a box full of wool under the Christmas tree. It was such a lovely surprise and all the colors matched my Christmas outfit just perfectly. I don't know how that one happened. But these are colors I usually admire but rarely pick up because I don't have specific project for them in mind. But now I will have them in my stash, which makes me super excited and I will definitely come up with some ideas for them. So thank you so much, Santia. We can wrap this episode up by talking about my wool stash a bit, because my future plans definitely include finishing the wet felted lamp tutorial and maybe felting another winter scene in 2D. But the thing I really would love to focus on during January is to organize my wool stash to create a catalog so I can follow up with the variety of the colors and wool types and brands I have in my collection and sort out all the projects in progress and all my project ideas. Because I don't know about you, but it's a mess and I really need to sort it out. I didn't participate in any craft fairs, so I can't even imagine how it is for those who did. I believe your felting corner or your felting room is just a mess and full of works in progress, unfinished objects and woolly bits all around you. Maybe not, maybe you're well more organized. Then please stick around in my channel, look for my next videos where I sort everything out and please leave comments and tell me how you do it because I would like to know. I hope we will get through this all together and next year will be filled with productive felting days and loads of mix. Thank you for sticking around and chatting with me in the comments this year and reaching out to me on social media. I really love this little felting community we have and I wish you all happy holidays. See you in my next video.